The views and opinions expressed by participants in the following public affairs program do not necessarily reflect the position or beliefs of WDEF or its staff. This is Point of View, celebrating a world record-breaking 62 years of quality public affairs programs from the studios of WDEF News 12, Chattanooga. Welcome to Point of View. I'm Nyata Kinsell, your host and senior producer. I'm so excited to have a guest host today, Mrs. Donna Christian Lowe. Donna, how are you? I'm well, thank you. So for happy to have me. you here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm welcoming our guest today, Miss Vanessa Jackson, with the Office of Multicultural Affairs. How are you doing today, Vanessa? I'm doing well, ladies. Good. Thank you so much for having me on Point of View. Thank We're you. happy to have you as well. And as a full disclaimer, I do sit on the board of the Office of Multicultural Affairs, but we have a very specific thing to talk about yes. today. What is that, Donna? It's fair housing. Vanessa Jackson, tell the viewers what is fair housing and who can benefit from fair housing. Fair housing is for all of us. We all can benefit from fair housing. Uh, the Fair Housing Act was made law in 1968, actually signed into law a week after the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who worked uh, so hard to uh, eliminate racial uh, discrimination and barriers for all of us. But what it does it, it is that it prohibits discrimination in the form of buying, leasing, or selling uh, homes or apartments based on the seven protected classes. Now, can you tell me a little bit uh, more about what the laws are for the renters? For, what protects them? Okay, for the renters, when we talk about seven protected classes, we're talking specifically about uh, those characteristics that cannot be a criteria to discriminate against. So we're talking about race, mm -hmm. color, national origin, religion, sex, familiar status, and disability. So all of those characteristics are ones that cannot be categories that you can be discriminated against in housing. So that plays a major part in all of us who seek housing in some form or another. So we've seen a recent uptick in the publication, the social media, your rights, sharing what our rights are. Why have we seen that recently on public service announcements, community platforms? Why are we seeing that right now? I think that it is something that even though the, the law has uh, been enacted since 1968, it is something that um, everyone needs to be reminded about because we have so much diversity mm -hmm. now coming into mm -hmm. our city, Absolutely. into our neighborhoods, all across this country. And uh, the immigrants and refugees and all of us need to know what our rights are. I think another reason is because of, uh, I think, the housing market right mm -hmm. now. And with the, there being so many people renting houses, uh, the, uh, being a predominance of people maybe uh, as first-time homeowners uh, that need to know their not rights as far right. as you uh, bring in a great point and that is you know the home market right now how does affordable housing affect renters well it afford, for affects renters uh, in a major way you know in that people are uh, looking for affordable housing as you know perhaps their income is not uh, increasing commensurate with uh, the amount that is being charged for uh, the lease and sale of housing uh, right now it makes it all the more important that people know what their rights are because they may encounter a landlord they may want to discriminate against them based on uh, some of these seven protected classes and the better that th they know their rights uh, the more likely they are to uh, be able to eliminate those barriers to them being able to find affordable housing. So it makes it a lot more difficult for them to find uh, housing in this kind of market period. But when you add uh, the factor of race and discrimination on top of that, it makes it uh, a daunting task. So last question, uh, share with us one case, a quick case and an outcome. Can you share that with us? Well, I can share. Rather than a case, I'll give scenarios. There are various different scenarios uh, that exist as far as uh, fair housing is concerned. Uh, I'll give one that people may not be 
a very well versed in, and that is familiar status. Mm -hmm. People can be discriminated against based on uh, the composition of their families, and the, the, the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination based on familiar status. That is, households with children in, the, in them 18 years of age or younger. So there are some landlords that don't want to rent to families mm -hmm. who have a lot of children, and they may want to try to charge uh, additional uh, fees. Uh, or so forth to try to uh, act as a barrier against providing housing uh, to these families. And that well, is against the law. When we talk about fair housing, we often talk about the renter or the person that's leasing. Mm -hmm. But we rarely talk about the rights that the landlords have. So let's flip yes. the page. Okay. Yes. Let's okay. talk about the landlords. Okay. Yes. Landlords do have rights, and it's important for them to know their rights and to be well versed on fair housing law because they may step into a situation unknowingly or use language uh, uh, unknowingly that can be uh, deemed as discriminatory against the person that's seeking housing. They do have a right to ask certain questions, uh, to uh, ask for a, an application, to ask for security mm -hmm. deposits, but they have to know the boundaries of the law. And that's the reason why fair housing, education, and outreach is so important to all of us. And in the Office of Multicultural Affairs, we do a lot of education and outreach. And we uh, have an open door policy as far as individuals who may mm -hmm think that they've encountered a discriminatory act and may perhaps they need to run the scenario by uh, those of us in our office to see what course of, of action they should take to see if they have a legitimate complaint. And I know you guys are currently hiring testers. What do the testers do? Well, test, testers are not employees of the city. They are actually individuals uh, uh, that are used throughout uh, cities and throughout the nation. Uh, that uh, pose as, I guess, mystery shoppers, so to speak. Okay, okay. And uh, they go and they pose as being someone who would like to rent uh, a dwelling, an apartment, a unit, and they just actually denote uh, and record the business practices of that landlord or that leasing agent that they mm -hmm. come into contact with. And this way we get to see uh, what types of business practices that these landlords and uh, leasing agents are using and if in fact there's something that's discriminatory in their actions. So often you've mentioned that the not the renter but the person who owns the property. A lot of people just buy property because it's an, it's an investment and they don't really know all the rules. So how do they get informed? They get informed by getting in touch with our office. We are located on the third floor of City Hall, um, and uh, you can give us a call if you don't want to drop by. Our number is 643-6706. We have materials. Uh, we have all kind of collateral information to help better inform all of us about Fair House. Thank you so much for coming on our yes, show today. Thank you, Vanessa. Next up, please stay tuned as Maurice Lewis talks to the preachers. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. News 12 Now, keeping you ahead of the weather with Storm Team 12 forecasts. On air, online, and right to your Facebook page. Anytime, anywhere, rain or shine. Join us for Point of View, weekends on News 12 Now and Bounce Chattanooga. Hello, there's everyday life, and then there are reality TV shows. There's one for almost every subject matter that you can dream of. Well, welcome to a new one, and it's called The Preachers. What an interesting idea. Four people who are all ministers, or preachers if you will, have gotten together, and they are part of a pilot program, an experiment from Fox Television News. Well, with us on the line today is Pastor Ulrich Quick, and you are one of the four. What on earth possessed you to do something like this? <laughs> well, I just, I just truly believe that it's an awesome opportunity for us to reach the masses. Um, I believe that it is every pastor's um, heart and desire to reach people that normally do not come to church. 
And that's what I truly believe that Jesus was truly about. He was about reaching the masses. He was not waiting on them to come to him. Uh, he went out and got who he wanted to receive. And that's what I believe this show is going to do. We're able to come into people's homes. Uh, people who normally would not come to church is now going to be watching four preachers uh, on national television, uh, giving them a biblical spin on today's hot topics. Well, yeah, so, you just mentioned you just mentioned it. I'm curious and, and fascinated by uh, some of your colleagues that are part of this uh, whole uh, reality preachers thing. At, at least one is very flamboyant, has been accused of dressing in, in a more pimpish kind of factor. And when you look at his background and some of the other people, you know, uh, it's questionable. How did, how did the selection process go to, to choose these ministers? Well, um, I can't really decide for them of how they got selected, but I can decide for myself. And, and the whole reason how I even got selected was that it was through God. God opened up a door where he told me to make one phone call that landed me this position. Uh, I was on national television and one movie producer saw me flipping her channels and got me the audition, called me from California and got me the audition even while all this was going on. I had so no, there's I had a lot to be said about being in the right place at the right time. Man, what thing, are you talking about? I, I think about? that you bring to the table is fairly interesting. Uh, there are a lot of so-called born-again Christians for whatever that means, and I'm not being disrespectful, but in your case, you say that you have actually died twice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, that is something that is very dear to my heart because every time that I look at a child that has been confined to, confined to a wheelchair, I think about myself because uh, when I was five years old, I got hit by a car, flew 45 feet in the air, came down, hit the pavement. Uh, my pelvis was broke, was broke because my foot was near my head and I was completely gone. I was dead on the spot. And it was God who brought me back. And then when I was 11 years old, um, I was in a deadly car accident once again, where I was in the back seat of a car. Uh, the driver did not see the stop sign and they, they straight, went straight through it. Another car came and T-boned us. We flipped three or four different times and I flew out the back windshield of the car and the car flipped on top of me. And it was actually who, my mom who found me she was, and this is going to freak you out, of course. This is crazy. But she was the one who actually lifted the car off of me. She flipped me on my back and slapped me on my forehead and commanded that I live. And let me tell you what, I've been living ever since, and I'm grateful to God for it. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's something to be said about families that pray together, stay together. And uh, organized right. religion seems to be part of your family industry. Uh, your, your mother and your father are part of your industry. Oh, most definitely. I remember when I was very small after the first accident and even the, from the first initial attack on my life was when the doctor tried to get my mother to have an abortion uh, with me. She, the doctor told my mom, if you try to have this baby, um, you could die or the baby could die or the baby would be a vegetable for the rest of his life because my mother was diagnosed with lupus while she was carrying me. So. Uh, for me to be alive, it is such a blessing. I'm grateful to be alive. Well, you have a lot of blessings in the form of perhaps viewers. Now, you guys on, on this pilot program, The Preachers, you're not certain as to whether or not Fox TV will actually pick you up. Uh, what does it mean to you and the others? Uh, the others have the so-called mega churches, and a lot of people respect that kind of industry, and some people say it's just another brand for hucksters. So what has this done for your life? Well, it has totally changed uh, my life altogether. Uh, one of the things that God told me a long time ago, he said, Oric, I will have you preaching before hundreds of thousands and millions of people. And I didn't know what that meant. But now that I know what millions of people mean, it means this talk show. Yeah, but and God I didn't tell you anything about taking a commercial break, though, did he? <laughs> very true, very true. And that, that's the thing about God. You never know what he's going to have you in store for. So you always got to stay on your toes and just keep listening to him because he's, he'll send you on a journey. That is most definitely true. Yeah, now you're somewhat different than some of your colleagues. Uh, one of the other uh, gentlemen in particular dresses very lavishly. He lives like a player. Um, uh, some of these guys, uh, they couldn't, if their records were known, 
could not get a job in McDonald's or any place where they had to open and close the cash register. But there is a certain amount of forgiveness that goes along with preachers, and now those guys and others can actually uh, have access to millions and millions of dollars. Exactly, and that's what I love about the body of Christ. And, and, and the truth be told, if I, I, I probably should not be qualified as well, but that's one thing about God. He, he, once you give your heart to Him and you are forgiven, your past is over. Now, of course, you have to, um, you have to deal with certain consequences of your actions and all that. But I have a past as well. I've done some things that I'm not proud of, and I, I'm grateful that God gave me a second chance at life by uh, allowing me to preach and be able to inspire and encourage people. When there was a day when uh, no one wanted to know who Orrick Quick was, but now. God has switched everything around where everyone wants to know my name. Well, it's, it's not just God. It's, it's a pretty powerful public relations uh, <laughs> team that's also working over there at Fox News. Uh, you're here because of Doris Rollins, and uh, she seems to believe that this whole experience for you is not really going to change you as the kind of person that you are. Most definitely not, uh, mainly because I've been prepared for this, this whole situation. Uh, one of the things that you got to know is that when God blesses you, he always, he always prepares you before the blessing comes. And one, things that, one of the things that I'm very um, adamant about is being humble. And I, I can care less about this arrogant atti attitude and all that. I'm going to be who I am because I'll, I'll be more successful being who I am than trying to be like someone else. Well, Pastor so, Ulrich, quick, we're going to have to take your word for that. And now you, you know I will be watching a whole, <laughs> a whole lot of other people to see what's happening. Uh, thank yes. you very much for joining us on po Point of View. And by the way, our show will continue. And when we come back, there's an organization that many of you have probably heard of. It's called the 100 Black Women. Now, what do they do? Please stay tuned. Jimmy can't sing. And Tommy can't dance. So we're going to put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. Got... Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Welcome back to Point of View. I'm Nyetta Kinsell, your host. With me is my guest host, Donna Christian Lowe. Donna, yes. welcome back again. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Nyetta. We just had a very interesting segment with Maurice and we the did. preachers. Yes. And interesting so, people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very interesting information. Yes. But who do you have with us today? Well, today we have the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. And we have with us Beverly Johnson, who is the president. And we have Ruthie Herford, who is also here with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to jump us. right in. Tell the viewers, what is the National Coalition of 100 Black Women? Well, the mission of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Inc., is to advocate on behalf of black women and girls in the areas of leadership development to promote gender equi equity mm -hmm. and social economics, uh, economic empowerment, education, and health. Okay, all right. And what is your role in the organization? I am the first vice president of programs, and under programs we have a mentoring program. Okay. And we also have programs with, that involve uh, doing things with for women and girls in the community. Okay. And the truth is that you guys have a big impact in the community. Mm -hmm. You guys have leaders of all walks of life in your organization and you guys focus on four particular programs throughout the year. And what are those programs? Well, our basic programs have to do with health, education, economic empowerment, and leadership development. And under those, we do mentoring with our young girls to make sure that we provide them with the different kinds of training and prepare them for career lives in those areas. Is that through your sister to sister program? That is correct. Through our sister to sister program that we do with the Chattanooga Girls Leadership Academy. Everyone mm -hmm. knows that. Leadership Academy, the Girls Leadership Academy. Yes, Wonderful CGLA. Yes, CGLA. Yes. And how about the Black Pioneer Women? Okay, our Black Pioneer Women's program uh, is an opportunity for us to celebrate women 
who sort of paved the way for uh, people like myself, who are sort of our unsung heroines. Mm -hmm. uh, they are women who have made uh, major contributions in our communities in years past, and we, this is an opportunity for us to single them out and to celebrate uh, their accomplishments uh, through the years. Wonderful. And within your health realm, you guys focus on HIV and women's issues. Mm -hmm. And um, do you guys partner with another organization to do this? No, not right now. We are in the community. We invite other organizations to, to our events but we are doing our, most of the work on behalf of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. Mm -hmm. So what kind of work are you doing in the community? Maybe a specific event or something that the community can become a part of. Can you help us kind of a couple events or something going on right now? Yeah. One of the things we do have coming up with our Women in Health, uh, our Women and Girls Health Conference that's okay. uh, scheduled for September the 24th okay. at uh, Erlanger Medical Mall. And it is a conference specifically for women and girls. I know people hear about the Minority Health Fair that's mm -hmm. coming up, but this right. is a little different because only women and girls are allowed, only female health care uh, providers will be there. Mm -hmm and then only healthcare education exhibitor females will be there. So it's a comfortable environment for women and girls to come and to talk about issues that are predominant to us uh, in, a, in a setting that makes them feel uh, engaging and, and, and we have the practitioners and the medical doctors there that can answer their questions. Uh, they're not intimidated by asking or getting the answers. So I notice you have two specific seminars for young girls and with body image and all the things that they go through. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, one of the, the uh, seminars is going to address uh, Ask the Doctor. Okay. We want the girls to feel very comfortable in a, in a safe and private environment where they can ask the doctor anything that um, they've had questions about and don't feel comfortable in another now, setting. Now, will their parents be present? Will their mom be present? No, this is okay. uh, specifically for young girls, okay. and they'll be. They can ask questions about maybe how to do self breast exams. Okay. Uh, we're going to also have one for the girls to talking about social media, okay. and um, so that they will be able to feel comfortable and to ask these questions and get some answers from uh, people who are experts in that field. I like that. Mm -hmm. And without the parents, I think the children, the younger girls are going to be more inclined to share and probably open up and ask more questions. And the, and the mothers, the parents are invited to attend the other seminars that we have as well. Okay. As um, African American women, how do you help the younger generation in our community to break the barriers that they currently have. The barriers that they currently have? Correct. Such, such as? Whether it's health related, economic, social. 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 That's a big right. deal for young people. Right. Well, one of the things that we try to do is model positive behavior for the girls. Uh, we bring in leaders from the from the community. You ask if we partner. Yeah, we we do seek out uh, women uh, throughout the community in various walks of life and expose our girls to them and let them know that these are healthy choices that you can make. And uh, we also bring in, as Ruthie talked about uh, in our mentoring program, different uh, educational leaders to uh, to acquaint the girls with other opportunities that these are choices that you make. This is a good choice, this is a bad choice, and these are the consequences for good and bad choices. And so when they are exposed to those different options, it really opens their uh, horizon in terms of, uh, I do have other options that I can make. Now, how long has the National Coalition of Women been around for uh, black women, but also the Chattanooga chapter? All right, our national organization was uh, chartered in 1981 in New York City. Okay. And the local chapter was founded in October of 1995. So we've been around 20 years. Quite a while. Yes, and uh, currently we have 45 members. We're bringing in four new members tomorrow now, night, what actually. What if someone wants to join? What do they do? 
Well, you have to be invited to okay. join. Okay. <laughs> oh. And so we do look for a diverse group of women okay. uh, so that we can ourselves benefit from, from them being members of the organization sure. as well. Okay. And so we've been around for about 20 years. We have chapters uh, throughout the country. And uh, as a national organization, we come together at least twice a year uh, with our other chapters from around the, con the country to talk about the different programs that we're doing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, I want to thank you um, for thank your yes. tremendous mm -hmm. efforts in our community, and we look ha uh, forward to having you around often in our show. Uh, Donna, it's been a pleasure co-hosting with you today. It's been a pleasure with you, Nayada. I hope to see your face around a little bit more as well. And thank you. please stay tuned for next week when Maurice Lewis brings. Quite an enchanting show. This is Nyata Kinsell with Point of View. Closed captioning provided by the following. Funding for this program is brought to you by Barnett and Company, specializing in tax efficient strategies for the preservation and distribution of family wealth, offering continuous investment management with a focus on long term strategies. Areas of service include investment, estate, education, and retirement planning. Barnett and Company. The power of compound returns over time. More information can be found on the web at barnettandcompany.com. <laughs>